What I've got set up here is a pass reject filter, part of a duplexer that was used many years ago on a linear translator that was in the Sierras that covered uh, Northern California. Sort of an experiment we did back in those days. And um, we're going to repurpose this for use with a remote base uh, in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, to uh, transmit on a site uh, with a remote base on 144.230, but uh, try to protect the input to a, trans um, a um, repeater that's at 144.790 input so that any noise coming out of our sideband transmitter is going to be uh, rejected uh, by this filter. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what we're going to do for the test setup. This is a guide for uh, how to do gain loss and frequency response tests. You can use the following block diagram. Um, first, uh, I use a couple of 6 dB attenuators to fix the tracking generator output and the spectrum analyzer input to 50 ohms. This reduces coaxial cable impedance variation effects and um, makes sure that the device under test has a 50 ohm uh, uh, source and load. Good coax such as RG142 or RG223 should be used for the best test results. Don't use uh, RG58 or RG8X, especially at frequencies much above 50, uh, 30 megahertz. Uh, it just isn't that good a cable for up in the, that frequency range. RG213 or 214 could be used, but it's neither very flexible. Um, and especially uh, if you're using small equipment on the bench top, it's going to push things around. So that's, uh, you can use it, but it's, uh, like I say, it's awkward. For best results at VHF and UHF, use N connectors, BNC connectors, TNCs, or SMA connectors. Now for through loss evaluation, first calibrate out the cable and attenuator losses using a barrel uh, in place of the device under, going to be under test. Zero reference on the spectrum analyzer. That'll be your reference for everything else. Uh, you can use uh, normalization on the spectrum analyzer as well. Um, then substitute a device under test for the barrel and measure its frequency response and loss. I usually uh, use minus 20 dBm for this test and I'll show you why uh, later. Once you've uh, normalized the spectrum analyzer, you should have a line that goes uh, with no, with, um, with the barrel on there, you'll have a line that goes straight across zero where you see the uh, uh, marker one there, just right along that line. And then uh, when you substitute the device under test, you should see its uh, response curve, which in this case at uh, 144.230 has about 0.23 dB of loss. Uh, that's the yellow line I'm talking about. And uh, number two is the, the null or a notch or reject, uh, that's a 27.54 dB down. And uh, then it uh, comes back up a little bit uh, and will stay around, it looks like around 10 dB, maybe 7 dB uh, at frequencies above that frequency. So this is uh, the kind of response you should see and you can save that one on the uh, spectrum analyzer for uh, later comparison to the return loss, which is the blue line you see, and I'll show you how that uh, we'll set up for that. You can see here that I've uh, connected a directional coupler to the input port of the uh, filter, and uh, the couple, coupler port of that is going to the spectrum analyzer input. The output from the spectrum analyzer's tracking generator is going into the output port of this directional coupler and the input port goes to the input of the uh, filter. On the output of the filter I have a 30 dB attenuator uh, which is the best load that I happen to have uh, for that purpose and obviously it's got a return loss of at least 30 dB so it should work uh, fine for that. For return loss tests we use this uh, block diagram I have here Spectrum analyzer tracking generator goes through a cable to a 6 dB attenuator and that goes into the uh, output port of a directional coupler and the other 6 dB attenuator comes goes to the input of the spectrum analyzer and um, 
it goes to the couple port of the directional coupler and the device under test goes to the input port of the directional coupler. This give us, gives us the return loss. The 6dB attenuators um, also help fix the tracking generator output and spectrum, uh, spectrum analyzer input to uh, 50 ohms and reduces the effect of coaxial cable impedance variations just like we indicated before. The tracking generator output is connected through a, the, the cable. Um, well, I already mentioned that it goes to the output port and the couple port is where you uh, have the spectrum analyzer input. And of course the device under test is placed on the coupler's input port. And again, good coax like RG142 or RG223 should be used for the best test results. Don't use the RG58 or 8X uh, at frequencies above 30 MHz. 213 and 214 can be used, though neither of these is very flexible when you're testing things on a benchtop, for example. Um, and again, N, BNC, TNC, and SMA connectors are what you should use if you can. And the uh, result of testing uh, of the unit I've been working with shows that uh, we have about 30.69 dB return loss um, at 144.228333, essentially 230. Um, so a very good uh, match there, uh, well beyond the 1.5 to 1. Um, and at the uh, notch frequency, of course, we have pretty much no match. So it's 0.54 uh, in the plus side. It's actually not that, but it, uh, it's within the measurement instrument uh, capability of the instrument. But anyway, uh, so it's not matched there because it's a notch there. Well, here's the uh, final result when I took the dummy load off, which was the blue line there, and put the antenna on the uh, port in its place. Now the antenna itself is uh, not uh, that well matched in this instance. It's only about one and a half to one uh, from previous measurements that I've made. Um, and as you see, the net result is uh, my match at the desired frequency is minus 13.21 dB, which is a little under one and a half to one, not much. Uh, good enough, but uh, if I had a little better antenna on there, I should see a better match overall. It'll never be better than the uh, worst case match that's in the system, uh, generally speaking. So that's something to keep in mind when you're uh, doing this kind of work. And uh, also remember that an antenna can pick up signals too. So you might see a bad standing wave because of stuff uh, coming in um, backwards on the antenna from other sources. However, in this instance, uh, the filter should take care of uh, uh, a lot of that kind of problem as well as the fact that uh, we're only looking at the uh, standing wave at the desired frequencies here. The reason I mention this is that uh, sometimes people will use a watt meter that has forward and reverse like a bird or something like that. And um, that's fine, except that uh, it doesn't discriminate uh, against frequencies off your own frequency that might be coming in backwards through the watt meter. So you might measure power from uh, uh, another transmitter on the tower that's near your uh, antenna. And uh, that would uh, make you think you have a higher standing wave than you uh, really do. Uh, I remember one instance where uh, we had a standing wave even when we didn't have the transmitter on. And that was uh, the reason. And it was a uh, broadcast transmitter that was causing the problem. It had enough power to uh, show us uh, a high standing wave even though we uh, didn't have the transmitter turned on. The reason that I... Uh, mentioned earlier that I was using minus 20 dBm on the initial through loss uh, curve was because the directional coupler of course has a minus 20 dB coupling port. That means that any signals there are 20 dB below the main signal going through the device. So what I do to keep everything in the same uh, power level at the input to the spectrum analyzer is to use 0 dBm, 20 dB higher than minus 20, of course, um, to um, get the traces about the same so I don't have to make any changes uh, to speak of um, on the amplitude of the uh, signal when I'm doing the test. And uh, I think the results will be closer uh, 
in um, levels on the analyzer that way when we normalize the signal on the um, uh, return loss tests. So I thought I'd just uh, bring that up um, as a final comment here.